Welcome, one and all, to the beginning of Tree Week. It's the three-year anniversary of our internet series, The Story You Never Knew, and to celebrate our problem child's anniversary, we have a ton of stuff for you guys. Starting with this video, every video we release from now till the 20th will have giveaways and special announcements. We're giving away recently released games, we're giving away awesome technology, and we're giving away some special surprise stuff later on this week. So make sure not to leave until the end of each video, or you might miss on getting some awesome stuff for free. Okay, now that we got the Tree Week announcement, out of the way, let's get into the tree stuffs. The leafy goodness you've been waiting for. <gasps> Soda Widow! The audience knew you'd be here by the title of the video, but I sure didn't! And you're blocking the spatial and visual representation of the continuation of this video! Why would you do that? Why would Game Freak let this happen? What is the purpose of this fake tree? If I ever get to continue with this video, maybe I'll find out. Well, maybe some tree-themed puns will convince you to move your residence. At least, that's what the script says, but I'm skeptical. <clears throat> Why did the tree cross the road? Because he was a pedestrian. No, no, there's no fucking way we're starting a script like that. Are you ready for the most intriguing video you've ever seen? Are, are, are you guys serious? Can we not start the script with a pun? Get out of here, Sudowoodo. We're moving on whether you like it or not. <laughs> Close enough. Just gonna squeeze on through here. Ah, to be a Pokemon trainer. To explore the open world, training and fighting and making friends one episode at a time. That, that is the life for me. I can imagine it now. Ah, another day, another adventure on my journey to become a Pokemon master. I, Grant Ketchum, will emerge victorious against all eight gym leaders and then take my talents to the Pokemon League. Onward, my Pokemon companions. To Victor, what the fuck is that? Since I'm balls deep in this Pokemon trainer fantasy, I have no memory of the minute that came before. So that's either the ugliest tree I've ever seen, or that's Pokemon. Well, it's a good thing I have this sweet plot progression device called a Pokedex that can tell me exactly what it is. What is that thing, Dex? Sudowoodo, the imitation Pokemon. Although it camouflages itself as a tree in order to avoid being attacked, its body is actually more like a rock than like a plant. It hates water and disappears whenever it rains. Okay, first of all, how does it disappear when it rains? Is it an Enderman in disguise? I guess it's a rock-type Pokemon? Hmm, I wonder how I can get it out of my way. Oh, there's an extra note in the Pokedex. If Sudowoodo is pretending to be a tree, lightly sprinkle water on it from a squirt bottle and slash or gun. Fuck! I knew I should have gone into that flower shop at the beginning of the game! I mean, the beginning of my adventure. Three weeks later. <sighs> I can't believe I had to travel all the way back to that dumbass flower shop just to get a stupid squirt bottle. I'd be really pissed if down the road I found some sort of hidden machine that allows me to use my Pokemon to fly everywhere. But uh, I'm sure that never happens. All right, tree to widow time to go back to your roots, which would be a tree pun, except you have no roots, so it doesn't really make any sense. Let me just slightly sprinkle you with some water. Holy balls! The Pokedex never said it would try to kill me if I sprinkled water on it, but I can take you on! Go, treesicle, attack with edge. Fuck, I wanted to capture it. Good good thing I didn't save. Eh, I'm sure I can find another. I mean, I hear fake houseplants are making a comeback, so maybe Sudo will be hard to find among the other fake bastards, but whatever. Onward and upward. Have you ever had an experience like that? All the confusion and frustration? See, while you might have not felt the exact emotions I did, all of us who experienced Sudowoodo in Pokemon games have actually been given a gift. The gift of good game development. You see, Sudowoodo serves an important purpose. Pokemon feels like an open world game. It's meant to feel that way. And the ability to just go into any grassy area to find Pokemon adds to that effect. It makes you feel like your next great catch could be around any corner. It makes you want to check every place a Pokemon might be. but like many games, the developers don't actually want you to be able to go wherever you want from the start. I mean, what is this, Breath of the Wild? No. It isn't. It's Pokemon, and Pokemon needs to be linear for the most part. And to do that, the developers thought of a bunch of different ways to impede your progress if you try to move on with the story without finishing the plot point you're on. So here's the thing. Some of the ways Pokemon stops your progress are totally fine. Example A, a rock Pokemon that thinks it's a tree. Blocking a player's path with a weird tree that knows how to twerk is some good fucking game design. Instead of just stopping the player, this suddenly becomes a puzzle. If it's your first time playing the game, you don't have any clue why the fuck this tree is moving or why you can't just go buy it. It's intriguing. 
and interesting, and you want to solve the puzzle. Developers, take note. If you want your game to feel like it's open world while you're silently making the player take the exact course you want, put a tree monster in front of the player. That's some good game design. Once you figure out you need to pour water on it, you're rewarded with the possibility to catch a rare Pokemon. A pretty snazzy prize! Think about it in comparison to other roadblocks in Pokemon. Take Pokemon Red or Blue, for example. Did you ever try to get to Mount Moon without beating Brock? There's an NPC who stops you as soon as you go too far and is all like, Oh, dude, my name is Jim. Have you seen the gym? It's a good gym. I, Jim, go to the gym all the time. Brock runs the gym, but Brock doesn't like Jim in his gym. Yes, Jim speaks in the third person sometimes. Go to the gym. Don't go near Jim. And then he takes you to the gym to make sure you know what the fuck he's talking about. See what I'm saying? That's some fucking bad game design. Put a tree in front of me. Get me curious. Seduce me with its branches. Make me want that tree. Make me happy about trekking all the way back to a flower shop to get a water gun so I can squirt Sudowoodo and catch it. Using Sudowoodo as a progression stopper is brilliant. It keeps the player on the correct path and gives the player a reason that it can't pass with a reward once the player figures out what to do. This isn't common for many games. If you've ever watched Ego Raptor's Zelda sequelitis, he complains about the exact same issue in Ocarina of Time. A gate is blocking Link's path, and to get up there you have to run an errand and talk to Zelda first. But here's the thing, there's no reward for solving this puzzle. So once you do solve it, you're just like, well, fuck, I didn't need to know why I had to go up there. I just wanted to go up there. But the game developers decided you couldn't go up Death Mountain until you knew why you had to go up there. So do widows in Pokemon act as the same progression blocking mechanic, but aren't nearly as annoying because you are rewarded once you figure out how to agitate them. So good job, Pokemon team. You certainly messed up some things, but so do gets the tree skull stamp of approval. Although it's still not technically a tree. In fact, it's not even a grass type, but whatever. I believe you choose your own identity. So do widow, if you want to be a tree, I fully support your decision. Don't let your dreams be dreams! Thanks, Shia. And speaking of dreams, who wants to win some super high-end headphones or an awesome high-quality microphone? Thanks to our amazing friends over at Blue Mics, we're giving away a set of these sweet Lola headphones and a Yeti microphone. We've each been lucky enough to get a pair of the Lola headphones from them before, and the sound quality is unreal. They are truly top-of-the-line headphones, and the Yeti microphone has been a tree skull staple for years. We actually started our channel using the Yeti, and now we all own one. So if you'd like to win either of these, all you have to do is click the Gleam link in the description. You can have more than one entry, just follow the instructions on the Gleam link. This giveaway will be going on through all of Tree Week, and we'll be announcing the winners of this giveaway and the others on our Twitter at TreeSkullTeam, so don't forget to follow us there to see if you win. Plus, we're also going to be tweeting out game keys on our Twitter during Tree Week, so whoever sees it first gets to use it. That's it for this video, but remember, our next video will also have a giveaway, and that one will only run for a few days, not all of Tree Week. So make sure to hit that bell button so you get notified when our next video comes out so you have a chance to win. That's all for today guys. Can't wait to show you what's happening in our next video. Until then.